had 1194 hours of coffee break. So you're telling me it's been at Starbucks a lot? <laughs> I thought that wasn't really a thing. No, it's totally a thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it tracks how, how much time you spend at Starbucks. That's a feature. <laughs> We are here at the 2023 Turatech Rally, and at long last, a bike I have longed to try, many of you have recommended to me, the BMW 1250 GS Adventure. I'm gonna get out and get to do a test ride on it here with BMW Motorcycles of Seattle and SoSo -So Cycles. So, uh, pretty excited to finally get my hands on this bike, one that I've had a lot of preconceptions about. Damn, okay, uh, immediate first impression. You can definitely feel that the motor, uh, the, the sideways bo is boxer, this is a boxer, right? Boxer motor, like the vibration is completely different from anything I've ever ridden. And all my fear with this bike is that it's gonna feel heavy and like a big barge, like I'm trying to turn the Titanic. That is not the impression I've gotten so far. Well, let's just try some, I've heard that the slow speed maneuvering is, is amazing on this thing because of the, oh my God. Okay, well, immediately misconception shattered because this does not feel like a barge. Like, seriously, let's try standing up. Okay, well, like, you're aware of the girth, like, the width and girth of the motorcycle. You definitely feel that, but uh, I don't feel the weight more than I have on other bikes that are uh, smaller. It doesn't feel any different than my Africa Twin or whatever. It really doesn't. Like, the weight feels similar to that. So I guess it wears its weight well, which is a good thing. The seat is very comfortable, obviously. Uh, there's the standing position. Of course, the tank is like a mile wide, and so it's really easy to get good purchase with your knees. And actually, there's a real sweet spot where the seat meets the tank that I'm getting really, really good grip, actually. So I'm impressed with that. Okay, geez, God, I, I seriously, it's like when I rode the Tiger 1200. I just expected it to feel like a, a garbage barge, and it really doesn't. Like these bikes wear their weight incredibly well and I can see why they're so popular for long distance touring. I'm not convinced it would be my first choice for off-road, but if I was trying to go, you know, a thousand miles or 10,000 miles or whatever, I could see the, the huge advantages of a bike like this on a long tour that also had some off-road involved. I am feeling I'm about to be like, obviously impressed because this is where it shines. It's on the road. I'll put my visor down for you. Does it have a quick shifter? It does. Shockingly stable, not at all surprising, not at all barge-like, damn it. I really want to hate this bike. Let's be perfectly honest. I want to be like, this is a, this is an unnecessarily huge and expensive adventure motorcycle, but there's a reason why they are the adventure motorcycle. Like, that's not an accident, and they continue to be so popular for reasons. It's one of those bikes that is more than the sum of its parts. I'm already getting that impression. It's not shocking, but, you know, because you, you look at stats on paper and you go, that's a big, heavy behemoth. Why would anyone want to ride that, particularly off-road? But none of that matters when you get on a bike and actually ride it and feel it. And, uh, you know, if you want the ultimate end-all, be-all, every single luxury feature, obviously you're gonna get a BMW, obviously you're gonna get this 1250GS. They don't make fancier bikes than this. Ducati kinda does, but it's fancier in a different way, in a less practical way, in my opinion. Uh, the, G the GS is a practical, fancy bike in that it has features that are for comfort and, and it's not about flash, it's about substance. I mean, you get the sense that it's a very well-made motorcycle. It's very smooth. You know, you would think hopping on a 1250, the uh, power delivery would be abrupt or difficult. It's not at all. Let's try. Oh my God. I was just talking to Shaheen from Moto Corsa and he was just, oh, and he was just saying about how low all the weight is and how smooth. This thing handles like a dream, dude. It handles like a dream. Styling wise, it's a good looking bike. It's very comfortable. The bars are in a good position. The screen is really easy to read and it's super bright today. Uh, it doesn't even look like, this is a weird compliment. It doesn't even look like an LCD screen. Like it just looks like that's painted on there. Uh, so that's a very easy to read screen. That's very nice. You got the key fob, obviously, all the modes. It's got all the uh, sensitive electronic um, suspension and uh, lean angle sensitive ABS, lean angle sensitive traction control, which I love that stuff. Oh man, the brakes are real touchy. I'm discovering. All right, we're in enduro mode. I'll turn the signal off. Clutch engagement, very smooth. I'm just feathering it in second right now. Well, it doesn't feel unwieldy or intimidating at slow speeds on this loose gravel. 
This probably has, they're like 80-20 tires. They're not great tires, but they're the best ones of any bike they have here. Yeah, this dust is brutal, dude. This dust is brutal. I'd like to go faster, but not gonna happen at the moment. Oh, but it's got, okay, gobs of power when you want it. Whoa, yeah, there is. Okay, wow, that is a very smooth power delivery. Like, there's no surprises there, but if you get your wrist bent downward, uh, there's a sh ton of power. Again, is this a shock? No, it's a 1250. But what's surprising is how linear and controllable the power delivery feels. It's also very stable right now, this off-road. And there's a lot of potholes. This is loose and dusty, as you can see. I can't see the terrain in front of me very well because of the dust, and I'm not worried about it because this seems like it's just handling it really well. Let's try standing. Okay, I like, I like where the bars are. Here's some big potholes. Okay, a bike this heavy should not eat potholes this readily. I'm hitting the bad lines on purpose. It's like, nah, we're good. You don't, you don't feel the weight. It's well suspended, it's dynamic suspension. It's gonna help you, it's gonna fix a lot of your mistakes and make riding a lot easier and more comfortable. I can tell that right now. Again, premium products, so you're gonna have fancy suspension and it makes a big difference. I'm learning that with the custom setup on my 450L. It is night and day, that was a big bump. Just took a gas tank in the, in the old gonads, so. Not because it popped, but because I was in a way bad position. Leaned forward when I hit the back side of that. Try leaning it over, standing up. Dude, oh, okay. So I was wrong in that I thought that it didn't make any sense why anyone would want to ride this off-road um, when there's so many other available options. It actually is quite smooth and quite easy to ride off-road. That's a good thing. So I understand why you would choose to take a 1250 off-road and the advantages that you get riding. Oh, look at this. This is some real chunky. It. Yeah, the advantages you get riding on the highway make it a really appealing option for getting there as well. It's an impressive machine. I, I, I mean, I didn't really expect it to not be. Again, for the price, how could it not be? I'm gushing, I feel like. I'm really impressed with, because again, I'm basically on street tires right now, but I'm not really sliding at all. It's a function of the weight distribution and the, probably the electronic interventions to a degree. But let's see, here's some good stuff. Oh, man, you could just float right over these. It is very easy to get my feet down. I'm uh, honestly shocked. This is a huge machine. It is a massive motorcycle. It, it's got the, the power to handle any size load. Two riders with full gear. Yeah, it's so... Definitely that lateral movement, you feel it. It's, it's an interesting new sensation. Who sings that song? New sensation. Damn it. New sensation. It'll come to me, or somebody will type it in the comments. Uh, and I'll just know that's how the internet works. If you look at it, you sit down like this, you see a lot of motorcycle in front of you. But if I close my eyes, I don't think it would feel that huge. It has a stately reverence. It has a presence, you might say. Holy sh**, that's awesome. Whoa, that was fun. That was fun. All right, we gotta see what we can do around some of these corners. Yeah, the brakes are super touchy, dude. You've got a lot of brake. Oh, dude, this thing takes off like a rocket ship. That was amazing. I, I didn't even brake traction, so if you give it half throttle, again, it's that intuitive traction control where it knows when you're trying to, but if you're just trying to go fast, uh, it, it seems like it kept that wheel glued to the ground, which is super impressive considering these are terrible tires on really loose, uh, loose terrain. Let's try to go fast. Yeah, I mean, again, there's a corner there, but really impressed. Okay, I'm gonna put it in second. We'll cruise in second. Can we do that in second? Oh yeah, gobs, gobs of torque in every gear. I feel like this thing could pull my Tundra out of a ditch if I needed it to. Definitely feels like there's just a lot of power there. Uh, I like the foot pegs, they're nice and wide. This has that low, that comforting low rumble. You know, it's like, I'm here, I got you, and if you need more, I've got more than you can handle. Sounds like a tagline for like a Dirty Harry movie. Dirty GS, he's back. This is some uneven, lanes here oh geez yeah the only thing it is the momentum gets going in the wrong direction you feel that but uh damn dude she leans surprisingly easy for a massive beast of a motorcycle i need to get farther back so i can hit some of this chunkier stuff here's some chunk <laughs> what chunk dude what chunk so slow speed crawling through chunky difficult technical stuff it's again remarkably easy to handle that weight is just down low it does not feel tippy or top heavy at all it definitely feels like 
like a weeble like it'll wobble but it won't fall down and then which is kind of true because it can't fall all the way down because you hit the cylinder heads so in many ways this is the tagline of the video obviously in many ways the 1250 gs is the weeble of motorcycles they wobble but they don't fall down they have a wide bottom yeah i could see blasting up some fun stuff on this this would be a great bike that you'd take on anything up to a single track trail uh not including the single track trail i would stop at the single track trail personally because the idea of trying to maneuver this through some tight trees and stuff and, and or pick it up on a single track type situation i wouldn't want to do that i mean people probably do that's fine Ooh, loose stuff what loose stuff big hole nothing it just floats like the suspension is just so so reactive in a in a incredibly appropriate way it's exactly what you want and the brake so touchy but very responsive like that i didn't lose traction when i just break oh here's some good oh yeah washboarded damn okay i didn't think i'd be hitting washboard at 30 on this thing i think i could have hit that at 50. in fact that I, I probably wouldn't even have felt it at 50. yeah geez it's got like a warp drive dude it is fast when you want to give it some throttle it's like riding in a weeble weebles wobble but they don't fall down in fact somebody needs to start a new bmw riding club the weebles again it's got a lot of momentum so when you hit something that upsets the suspension it comes up uh with a lot of weight behind it that is how physics work shockingly Whoa, <laughs> oopsie <laughs> gravity has no effect on a 1250 gs that's crazy because i always used to say my africa twin jumped like a dead cow and uh i gave it almost nothing and definitely got a little off the ground i'm not saying we just aired 40 feet but to lose traction at all is uh is impressive coming up off a jump at, you know less than 30 miles an hour the seat is so wide and comfortable it does make moving side to side uh less smooth yeah because there's a back on the seat so you really you have to, you can't just slide you have to lift up to get your your butt crack on the edge to lean it hard sitting down in a corner so if you keep hearing like a sound of glass shattering during this video those are my preconceptions being destroyed by this ride i was wrong in many ways and i think if you look at the thing and you make a judgment you judge a book by its cover you think you're looking at the suburban the, the gmc yukon of motorcycles it's like a bus almost of motorcycles and uh it doesn't drive like a bus it's like a bus with a corvette suspension and engine in it I, this is not a good metaphor the point is is it a simile it's a simile i should know this i have a, I have a degree in this point is i was wrong it's really easy to ride it's fun and uh i hate how much i like it which is what i was honestly the thing i was most afraid of because now i gotta go tell all my gs friends that i was wrong and their bike is rad but also it literally has a coffee break timer come on like it's got to be like what when it's at rest like when it's sitting with the key on or whatever but the jokes are too easy bro the jokes are too easy well how long has it been at starbucks well you want to you want to win the record for that so i guess there are intangibles that come with buying a bmw if you're considering one one just the unbelievable amount of oh let's try the abs downhill interesting it's actually giving me a little control yeah so if you buy one of these you're gonna have to deal with your friends repeated jokes about uh you stopping at starbucks i think the, the people that handle it best are the ones that just lean into it and like post pictures of their bike at starbucks and stuff yeah because the gag i know you know this but is people that buy gs's don't actually ride them off road they just ride them to starbucks and i think maybe it's both i think people on gs's do go to starbucks but like that's because starbucks is a great place to stop when you're out on a long adventure ride because you could sit down get some wi-fi get a coffee rest air conditioning like i stopped at starbucks on the way back from our last trip because I wanted all those things. Let's try the ABS now. Oh, dude. Yeah, I can slam on it, bro. And it's like, it let me roll enough. Purposely taking bad lines and it's just eating it up. Just eating it up. The exhaust is very mellow. I honestly don't like it. I want a little bit more sound. <coughs> yeah, dude, it's a rocket ship. Holy hell. I would love to get out and really rip on this thing. Again, it's like I said when I rode the Tiger, like why even get a sport bike? This is far more comfortable and is faster than any human needs to go at any time. 
and you can go longer and farther and more places, way more places. You get all the advantages of an adventure bike and it's like a slightly less fast bike. Yeah, yeah, I know technically whatever, but I don't need to go 200 miles an hour, so. So overall, my biggest impression is, is that I was wrong about the bike and how it feels. It's much easier to ride. This is what anyone that's ever ridden me, ridden one. <laughs> this is what anyone that's ever ridden one tells me. And they're right. It's a fun bike. It's a comfortable bike. It's a bike that I would very, I would very confidently embark on a cross country or a tour of the state or, you know, ride from here to Alaska or whatever, knowing that if I wanted to hit a gravel road, or even some two track along the way. I could, I could feel good about it. I could feel confident uh, that the bike can more than handle anything that I'm probably gonna be willing to throw at it with fully loaded gear and everything. So it does it all, unsurprisingly. You know, the question marks with these bikes are the, are the downsides of the price is a huge one. And maintenance isn't cheap. And you know, it's one of those, you probably gotta take it to the dealership, but if you can afford the motorcycle, you can probably afford the maintenance. Um, you gotta listen to people making Starbucks jokes all the time. That's a big con. It's so obviously, while it doesn't feel as heavy as it looks, it is heavy. You definitely feel the momentum and the inertia of this machine when you're riding it off-road. It's really wide, so like getting through tight spaces is a whole different animal on this bike, but at least like the front's as wide as your panniers, so you're not gonna get surprised, I guess. One advantage to the cylinder design is that if it falls over, it doesn't fall over all the way. So if you fear about a bike this heavy is having to pick it up, the one nice thing is that they don't usually fall all the way over. Like, I'm literally concerned about getting through this. I hope that we fit. We're gonna find out. I guess they wouldn't leave me through here if it wouldn't fit, but this feels, in looking at that, it feels like I wasn't gonna get through. This is the motorcycle only bridge out here. It's really cool. Highlight of the trip every year. It is gorgeous. Now, this one's a lot less narrow. I feel more confident about it. Very comfortable bike, very easy to ride, easy to, to get good grip on the bike standing up so you're not leaning over onto the bars. Lots of modes, lots of features, like if you want cutting edge, the most technology on a motorcycle possible, it is really hard to beat the flagship, the 1250GS. It's really fun to ride and I've never said this before but I would, I would consider owning one, so wow. It's going to have to be on my list of bikes I go back to and you guys know I'm, I'm, I'm all about those Japanese bikes but I've ridden an Africa Twin and it's not comfortable like this thing and it only feels slightly less big so definitely worth considering if you're in the market for a true large capacity adventure bike to take you around the block or around the world that was really fun so thanks to uh, bmw of seattle and so 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 motorcycles for the opportunity thanks to the ride leaders and thanks to Turatech for hosting the uh, Turatech ride and providing us these opportunities all in one place. That was eye-opening and super fun. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't. More test rides, motorcycle camping content, advice videos, things like that. And please subscribe because I want to be your internet riding buddy. And I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. A oh, thank you. I can't wait to get my Starbucks card for doing this test ride. It's so awesome. This is actually a great test of like slow speed screwing aroundery. God, it doesn't feel as heavy as it is. This is uh this is something. Slash maybe a fat guy needs a fat motorcycle. Here I am. That's why it's so comfortable.